Okay, so you see down there, my cords down there, my my antenna cable down there is uh, ready and waiting. Now uh, comes the part where I have to bid farewell to my good old uh, uh, OEM stereo. Um, I would prefer to have kept it because I really do like it. I like using it, uh, uh, but. Um, I've got no choice because I've seen guys where they mounted, uh, they've mounted them right here sticking out. And I thought my passenger, my wife is going to be sitting there and it's going to be banging against her leg. Uh, I've seen, um, uh, mount, mount, mounted down in this area. Same thing. Now I'm banging my leg against it. Uh, I'm over six feet tall. So looking at all the other options, I've seen it where they've mounted it back here in the uh, uh, compartment here where you can put all your drinks and stuff like that. Um, and that's a better place to mount it, but then whenever you're working it or anything, you got to reach backwards to it to, to, uh, to uh, change channels or anything like that. Um, so I didn't like that. The other option was to mount it up top here in this area. I've seen it, and uh, that I did not want to do uh, for two reasons is um, Alberta is really uh, lost their minds with this distracted driving thing, and uh, let alone the antenna being an advertisement that there you've got a CB in your vehicle, uh, which is not illegal, but I just don't want to draw attention to the cops. And then especially if I have uh, a CB radio up here where they can see it and, uh, and, and then they want to pull me over and ask questions and see if I'm on it because with the distracted driving that they have, uh, laws in effect, uh, nobody can touch the uh, a CB, cell phone, anything, and which is... I'm I'm good with the cell phone and everything because people can't keep their hands off of them and uh, keep, they can't stop themselves from texting. So I'm good with that part of it. But it encompassed CB radios, which also made it illegal for truckers uh, to use CBs while on the road. And uh, believe me, it caused all kinds of uh, uh, havoc here. And they ended up revising the law saying that a trucker could use it if he can prove that he has to maintain constant contact with his uh, uh, dispatcher or uh, emergency personnel can use them uh, uh, for emergencies or they can be used in the case of an emergency, which I suppose if something should happen and and you uh, pull over to the side of the road, uh, you can call in an emergency or something uh, and try to get help to that area. Uh, but you cannot use it while you're driving. And I, I actually personally think it's ridiculous because uh, truckers have been using CBs, people camping been using CBs uh, on the road, uh, without, uh, any type of, uh, major, um, uh, issues for, who knows, 35, 40 years, 50 years, you know, it wasn't until people started texting when we started having problems with their cell phones. So I, I just think that Alberta went a little overboard with that, trying to be, uh, as they put it, the most comprehensive, distracted driving law in all of Canada. Um, they basically chopped off an arm, uh, to fix a hangnail. So <clears throat> anyway, back to, uh, this installation. So, uh, what I wanted to do was avoid having that radio in an area where it can be seen in an area where it was going to be in the way of legs, uh, where, you know, if you're off-roading, you're bouncing around, somebody can bump into it hurt their leg or or something like that i didn't want it there so i decided that i'm going to sacrifice the radio and uh and put the cb in here along with uh a new uh radio heads uh head there uh 
and um, uh, have it just a very nice, clean install. So first thing I got to do is I've got to get this panel off here and get in behind here so I can get the radio out. So um, from what I understood, uh, I got this through Crutchfield, uh, this radio, and they give you... Um, and they give you all the instructions. So from what I understood, uh, it's pretty straightforward. You you take the two screws out, which are here and here. Um, you remove these uh, silver uh, pieces of trim. And that will allow you to get to two screws, which will allow you to remove uh, the face plate here. Once you have the face plate off, then you can get to the radio and pull that out. So I'm going to do that. And, um, and then we'll catch up where I get to that point. Okay. So I've got that face plate off. Uh, I got to tell you something. I absolutely love working on this FJ. Everything is so simplistic and so easy to get to. Uh, it, it's just, uh, very, very impressive. Uh, one thing I want to mention when you're taking these, uh, these silver trim pieces off is they're going to be on there a little bit more firmer than you think. Just gently just pull it from the bottom is what I did. I pulled it from the bottom and, and they'll work themselves out. Uh, so just, uh, they'll, they'll pull right out. Don't be afraid of them. They're in there pretty good. Um, this is all the, uh, plugins for the, uh, for the controls for the heating and cooling system, uh, they just unplug and um, and uh, I'm already to this point. I, it took me all of about a minute and a half to get this far. So now I've just got uh, there's four bolts here. Take these out and I'll pull that radio on out. I'm just using my little small Makita here. I've got a attachment on there, magnetic. Just gonna just slip it right on here. I'm gonna loosen those off just a little bit and then I'll pull those out. I'll pull those out by hand. That way the radio just doesn't drop on me. And just pull that right on out. I like the magnetic one because then you can just, uh, you don't have to worry about grabbing hold of it. And actually, I'm going to say this. Once again, this is why I love this FJ. And I don't think it gets enough credit for the vehicle that it was. Especially now since uh, Toyota discontinued it. Um, I was going to take those two last bolts out by hand because I didn't want the radio to drop. And I just noticed as I was about to do that, right here, there's hooks holding the radio in. So when you do pull it out, the hooks are still holding it in place. That's engineering. That is somebody who's thinking about uh, working on this vehicle. And, and too many times in my industry uh, that I'm in, uh, where I uh, work on and install uh, mobility equipment, Stairless, porch lifts, uh, ceiling track systems, and such. A lot of it is engineered towards uh, getting the job done. However, uh, some of the equipment I deal with is not engineered to be serviced. In other words, uh, some of the tubs and stuff that I work on, uh, you have to completely take the tub apart to get to certain things that are wear items, they wear out. So you're looking at an hour and a half of taking a tub apart to get to uh, two small $7 parts to replace, and which would take you about 30 seconds or 40 seconds to replace. So uh, they, once again, have impressed me with the fact that they they had the foresight to put hooks for this radio bracket to sit on so you could take all four bolts out uh, and not worry about the radio falling. Impressive. 
Okay, so here I am, and now we've reached a part where it's the not for the timid, but it's not too bad if you just go for it. So what happened is, is I'm now trying to mount my CB radio with the uh, aftermarket uh, double DIN bracket. The problem I was running into was trying to get that CB radio in the right position for me to mount both the radio and the CB. Now, I'm going to show you the other side, the other mount, which is this side. And as you can see here, uh, you've got some slots down there to mount. And, um, and I'm using the lower slots. So I tried these slots down here at the bottom and and neither of them could either get it it would be out too far or to be it would be out too far whoops and it would be um or it would be in too far and what i was shooting for was something that was flush with this frame piece because it's such a tight fit that when the radio is mounted in there, let's see if I can get this. The face plate of the radio is going to have to sit slightly on top of that uh, CB. So I needed it to be flush. So that is what I'm trying to accomplish here. And I was able to do that. Excuse me, I gotta switch my hands around and everything here. Back over to this piece. So there it is. I put a nice clean hole right there. And that's where I'll run that bolt through on the side of that CB. Okay, so I'm back and uh, this is where I'm at. So I had to... Uh, rearrange so to speak uh, the arrangement I had I was gonna have the radio on top and the CB on the bottom but I discovered that it wouldn't actually work that way because the radio needed to stick out further than the uh, CB did and um, so what ended up happening is is I actually went back and I drilled two more holes this was the original hole I had drilled. And there's another spot up here that's got the same kind of uh, marking as this, a little circular mark, just like these ones here. So I drilled that hole and it put it just right where I needed it to be um, as far as getting it mounted. Then what I did is there was a little gap there at the top. So when you look in there, there's a gap right in between the radio and the CB and I just ran a piece of black electrical tape in there and that covers it up pretty well so um, I've got it to fit really good it looks really good in there and I'll uh, show you here real quick okay so I've set it up on on those hooks that we were talking earlier now this is the side trim that uh, it was a complete square that went around it but it was too tight of a fit so I sliced off the ends and I'm just using those so I'm just gonna put those ends in place here and where's the other one here and here Okay, so now those ends are now slid, slid, in, slid in place. Um, <clears throat> and as you can see, the CB is sitting on top there. And there's a gap there, but you can't even tell because now I've got the black tape in there. So you can't even see that gap. But what I was trying to do is make sure that this face plate here was flush with those, uh, with those ends there, which it is. So now I'm going to put on the face plate and show you how it all fits.
Okay. So, I'm just going to stick that in there. So, that's it right there. Um, the whole thing. And that's how it's going to look. Once everything's all hooked up and everything. Uh, the CB is sitting above the radio there. But everything should be functional. And I even checked to make sure that my microphone would screw in there. Uh, which it does. So there's no interference with the microphone screwing in to it. Um, I'm going to probably put a hook for the microphone somewhere on here. This one here uh, was, it's actually for picture frames, but I use it because uh, I had an iPhone and I would plug it into the auxiliary down here. So I would just stick it right there so it would just be on the dash. So I might actually take this off or, or utilize this space on this side, depending on uh, which, uh, and maybe put a hook um, or maybe put a hook somewhere over here for the uh, microphone. But uh, that's how it looks. So pretty much the rest is just wiring it in. And uh, I'm going to do that uh, now. And when I'm done, I'll button the whole thing up and let you have one last look at that. Um, oh, actually, I might be back to show you about that, S, uh, that SWR meter. So I might actually do that. Uh, when I'm setting up the uh, the reception for the uh, CB. But I think it looks pretty good in there. Um, I, everything's all black, so it kind of looks like the, you know, the original. It's all black in there. Uh, these trim pieces fit really nice in there. Um, they make it look really good. Uh, it looks like uh, it belongs... I'm really pleased with how it looks and uh, should be equally pleased when I see it actually working. So, we'll be back.